to get RTM, we do almost the same thing. Not quite. If you define it exactly the same, you'll have a, zero, a negative sign running around, and you won't be able to get rid of it. So RTM, we're going to define almost the same way as e to the minus j alpha minus pi over e to the j alpha. So let's check and make sure that's OK. That will give us er equals that, um, e to minus j. Let's see, uh, this will be a minus, so it'll go into there. It'll be 2 alpha minus pi. Once we sort of combine them, e incident e to the j kz minus omega t, if we imagine a plane wave along the z direction, polarized along the x direction. And then uh, this can just come back there, where it'll be e i e to the j k z minus omega t, and then minus 2 alpha plus pi. So there's your phi, your phase, uh, phase shift, tm mode is minus 2 alpha plus pi. OK, if we're going to do that, let's now go ahead and write out uh, RTM. So it's e to the minus j alpha minus pi, which is the same as e to the minus j alpha times e to the pi, because the two minuses make a plus. So let's first write e to the minus j alpha. That's cosine of minus alpha plus j times the sine of minus alpha. And that whole thing times e to the j pi, so that whole thing is times um, the cosine of pi plus j times the sine of pi. All right. And the bottom is just cosine alpha plus j sine alpha. OK. So I chose minus pi for a very specific reason. All it does is give us a negative 1. Okay? It's a way to flip the sign over here. Because basically, cosine of minus alpha is the same as cosine alpha, so that goes away. This minus comes out, so I'll make that a minus sign like that. I'll do that step by hand. And so now we have cosine alpha minus j sine alpha. This sine of pi is 0. Cosine of pi is minus 1. So this is just minus 1. So when I added that pi, it really just served to flip this around. I wanted to stick a negative 1 in the top. That's going to fix that negative 1 that runs around if you do it um, incorrectly. So this is uh, going to be minus cosine alpha plus j sine alpha over cosine alpha plus j sine alpha. That's RTM. And if you think back to your previous definition of RTM, it had, what did it have on the top? It had n squared cosine squared theta i. And it had a negative here, n squared cosine squared theta i. And then it had the square root of this thing that could go imaginary on us, the square root of n squared minus sine squared theta. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to go ahead and pull out a j and say plus j times the square root, and we're going to turn around. Sine squared theta i minus n squared. And the bottom looked similar. This was plus n squared cosine squared theta i plus j times the square root of sine squared theta i minus n squared. So as I've said before, a lot of physics problems you can't just solve. You have to have some experience and insight into the problem. So from this, you can see that cosine alpha then is n squared cosine squared theta i, right? And you can see that sine alpha is the square root of sine squared theta i minus n squared. And of course, these cosines are not squared. So that's, I knew I was doing something wrong. There it is, yeah, those are just cosine theta i. OK, so then you can find that the tangent of Alpha is the same square root, sine squared theta i 
minus n squared over n squared cosine theta i. And then you can solve for the uh, phase, so the phi tm. We said before it's minus 2 alpha plus pi. So it's minus 2 times the inverse tangent of sine squared theta i, the square root of sine squared theta i minus n squared over n squared cosine theta i plus pi. So there is phi tm. And now we have them both. So now let's see what they look like. So I'm going to plot them for you real quick. Uh, here they are. So here is the phase shift. This is just a direct plot of phi te and phi tm. So here's phi te. It actually comes out negative the way we set things up. And we're only doing the large angles where you have total internal reflection, so from about 40 something on. And phi tm comes out positive. What you really care about is the difference between phi te and phi tm. If you have light internal reflecting and it's got two components, te and tm, they're going to have some phase relationship and this is what's going to happen to their phase. What you really care about is their relative phase relationship. How does, what's the difference in phase? So if they were in phase before they were linear, what's their phase relationship now? So for that, you actually care about phi te minus, uh, or phi tm minus te, or te minus tm, either way. So here's a plot of tm minus te. And it goes through a very special point at about 53 degrees, right, right there, it goes about there, and that's at about 135. Okay, so at theta equals about 53 degrees for n equals 1 over 1 1.5, basically at the glass-air interface, um, phi tm minus phi oops, te is about 135 degrees. Well, if you did two of those, you'd be at um, you'd be at 270 degrees. You'd be pi over two out of phase, just just negative. So you can actually make a device out of this thing. You can uh, make something called the Fresnel ROM. So this is just a piece of glass. Okay, we're just doing reflections here. So there's no anisotropy. There's no interesting properties. If you have a piece of glass shaped like this, and you have linear light come in. So here it comes in. So we've got TE and TM both in phase. They enter normal, and when they go in normal, that's in phase. There's no phase change on an external reflection or on a transmission into the glass. But right here is their first internal reflection, and it's at 53 degrees, if you make the ROM right. 53 degrees, so what that means is you get a shift of 135, right? So they're out of phase by about that much, right? about a half of pi over two, and then they do another phase shift. And that gives them another 135. They end up out by 270, which is the same as being pi over 2 out of phase. So what comes out is circular. So you can actually manipulate polarization pretty much arbitrarily by making light go through internal reflections. The only disadvantage of these things is that they're big. Right? So this is not a little film material that does this inherently through anisotropy. This is a fairly large uh, piece of glass. But it can do it, and not too sensitive uh, to wavelength, really. It really just depends on this number. As this changes with wavelength, the properties will change. But it's one useful way to manipulate polarization.